positive for Flojo. So the question is now, can anyone break that record? Well, ask a computer for the ideal sprinter to do it, and this might be the answer. An ideal sprinter will be 5 feet 10 inches. You will weigh 145 pounds. Her stride length will be 7 feet 10 inches. Her stride frequency will be 5 times per second. Her heart rate will be below 70. These are the components you must input the mindset. The ideal female sprinter really is one with the physical tools. You have to start with the physical tools. Long legs, powerful, quick. Um, Wilma Rudolph, Wyoming Atias, um, Evelyn Ashford come to mind right away. But the most important of all is the ability to concentrate and focus because you have less than, in the women's case, less than 11 seconds to complete your race, and it takes total concentration. One brain lapse, and you've lost the race. The ideal profile, physical and psychological, for a sprinter is to, one, have the sprinter syndrome, which is the ability and a desire, almost compulsion, to want to do it right now, who looks for instant reward wants to hold, spend their energy now, get paid right now. Couple with that, the ability to sustain that drive and that urge over the last 25% of the race. The whole idea of athletics is how well can you perform with inordinate amount of stress, be it physical, mental, or whatever. And what about the world record holder? What was her mindset upon setting the 10-4-9? How did she prepare? You have to prepare mentally as well as physically. I knew that I had put in all the training that I could possibly put in prior to setting the world record. I just had to wait, I had to be patient, and I had to continue to be motivated. Flojo broke the existing world the record by such a large amount of time, many still question how she was able to do it and how anyone could ever surpass it. I believe the athlete that breaks my world record, she's going to have to want to break that world record in her mind, and she's going to have to train, I believe, with someone much faster, like a guy. I attribute my 100 and the 200 meter world records to my training with my husband, who was much faster than I was. Training techniques and negative drug tests aside, seven years later, the debate rages on. Here was a record that, in my opinion, a woman would have to take a lot of male hormones to break. There are several things that are pretty apparent that might account for her success in 1988. The first is in 1984. You can see here she has a great deal of tension on her face, but more importantly, down here in the hip flexor area, there's little or no development at all. Now look at 1988. That's the difference right there. That's the critical difference in that particular joint. That's something that could have easily have been developed in four years in the weight room without any chemicals at all. A lot of people look at the world record in the 100 meters, and I've heard and I've read it from some athletes. They've said that it's so far advanced that they, they're not willing to try. Already, they're defeated. As a scientist, I have the data that tells you that, that the 100 meter world record just keeps getting broken. And I've even seen the great records, like Bob Beam's long jump. And people said, oh, that thing won't be broken for 100 years. Well, it took maybe 20, and they're gonna keep going. And every once in a while, an athlete will come along with such superior skills that they'll put the record outside of the reach of humans for a while. They'll get there.